days ago, there was a leak for Strixhaven. And Strixhaven is the next set coming up. But today, we've got a leak for Innistrad. Innistrad doesn't come out until the end of the year, and we have a leak. This is insane. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. I have to say, it's a fairly exciting day. I really do love it when we get information that is ahead of schedule. And we're not technically supposed to have yet because personally, I don't know about you, but I'm always fiending for new information about Magic the Gathering. So the fact that Wizards of the Coast is as leaky as the Titanic isn't really a big problem. So today, what we actually have is product packaging for the upcoming Innistrad set. Now, I will also state there's only one of the two Innistrad sets that we have the artwork for, for the packaging and everything. But it does have some tantalizing hints of what to come, although we should put a little asterisk up there in the air about how some of this may change. I'll get into that afterwards. So let's actually take a look at the images because they're pretty exciting to look at. Now I'll be real, because of my current setup and having to use a phone to view things, I may or may not, uh, like the, the whole screen may show the image or it may just be on the side, but I'll be staring down at my good old telephone. We're gonna start out by looking at the Innistrad set booster, okay? So this is pretty interesting right off the bat. You've got three different things going on, like divided by these lines coming down. So on the top you have what at first looks like a little maybe vampire kind of lord or maybe an elven dude sitting on a throne. Like he, I don't know about you, but that's what my eyes were drawn to first. And I didn't even notice what was behind him. But when I did, my eyes went, whoa, wait, what? Because right behind whoever this throned individual is, that's Ren and Six. Ren and Six is a planeswalker that I am very, very much interested in. Ren and Six was originally created in Modern Horizons, right? Now, Modern Horizons, in my opinion, felt like a fairly rushed set in terms of, uh, they just kind of put everything together, put it out there to see what would happen. So Ren and Six wasn't a planeswalker that got a lot of detailed background story. The idea behind Ren and Six, like this dryad who's fused with a tree and has access to fire magic and everything, I found that pretty interesting. But overall, we didn't get a ton of history about Ren and Six and like who and what they are. So if we're gonna get the opportunity here to delve more into their past, that's super, super exciting for me because I have to admit, out of everything that came out of Modern Horizons, Ren and Six was the absolute most intriguing to me. So that's in the first grouping at the top of the pack. In the middle grouping, it looks like we have a vampire. Um, I don't know, maybe, might be, is that supposed to be somebody like Olivia Valdarn, or is that just supposed to be a vampire from Innistrad? I'm not 100% sure. Honestly, the Ren and Six is really what gets me fired up for this particular pack. And down at the bottom, you can see uh, a card that shows essentially two werewolves. You've got a more up-close werewolf, like, biting face, and then you have another werewolf hunched over in the background with the full moon behind them. So, of the two Innistrad sets that we're getting, I think this is going to be the werewolf themed one. It is It is interesting to note that with this particular set, or not this particular set, this particular pairing of sets, this is something Wizards hasn't done before. Normally when it comes to the end of a year, like the last set that comes out in a year, it has the longest season before another set comes along. So we've got a scenario where you're going to have, like for example, let's take Zendikar Rising that just went by. If you played on Arena or whatever, you would notice that the Mastery Pass had like 130 levels. It went on much longer than other Mastery Passes. Kaldheim's is only 80 or 90 levels, right? So there's a huge difference between that. And the reason is the end of year set has the longest amount of time before we get another set. So Wizards is taking another approach with this and they're breaking it down and they're going to give us two different sets. Now they haven't given us full details on how they will be released, but I imagine they're going to be staggered. So probably we'll get one for the first half of that season and then one in the other half. And that way it keeps the whole flow going because Wizards knows we like new stuff, keep it flowing. 
So for me, overall, I have to say, just looking at the set boosters, it's a pretty exciting concept to start with. But we actually have other packaging to look at that will give us more information. So let's take a look at the draft booster packaging now. So at the top of the draft booster package, again, they've done a three dividing kind of category, but instead of going with the diagonal lines, they're doing it across. And at the top, we have yet another werewolf, big surprise, or I guess it theoretically could just be a wolf, maybe a, oh wait, are there two moons? It, like a moon frenzied wolf, or it could be a werewolf. It could be either, but again, like these are these are what's leaning towards me thinking that we're getting the this these leaks are for the werewolf set. Now, right below the wolf, you will notice somebody that you may or may not be happy to see, and that is Teferi. So we're gonna have Teferi on Innistrad. And I, as far as I recollect, Teferi has never appeared in an Innistrad set. I don't know if he's actually been to the plane of Innistrad, but I am curious as to what specifically would Teferi be doing on Innistrad. Now, in terms of his artwork, it's pretty standard fare. You can tell it's Teferi because of his, his uh, standardized style of clothing. It looks like Teferi's got the staff. Like, that is unmistakably Teferi. Very easy to pick him out. And then below him, we have a, another vampire lady. I don't, like, when I, when I see the vampire ladies, there's not too many vampires that I can really think of, aside from Olivia Valdarin, in the, um, in the Innistrad world, not off the top of my head. If you have other guesses on who this vampire could be, they, I don't know, they got this the funky kind of headdress going on and the blood red armor, it looks pretty intense. And the box for it looks nice as well, right? Like that's, it, I definitely find it interesting, the whole divisory line, do it this way for set boosters, do it this way for draft boosters. That is definitely interesting to me. And then when you get to the box itself, they keep the three line design but now they cut two lines, three sections, but now it's like in a downward motion instead of sidewise, right? So that's funky. But where it gets really funky is when we take a look at the artwork for the collector booster, because that looks so much different. At least one half of it does, right? So in the background, we can see an autumnal feeling Ren and Six. Now, I don't know off the top of my head if the tree folk, Ren and Six is a dryad, merged with a massive tree, right? So I don't know if that tree that Ren is like uh, fused with ends up going through seasons. That's a cool concept, you know what I mean? Depending on what's going on and that could influence Ren's power and mood and stuff like that. That's a funky concept. I have to say, like I said before, super interested in Ren and Six and wanna know what's going on with that. So in the background, we have Ren and Six with uh, different artwork. So who knows, that might just be a scenario where they like this is the special extended border because in the collector boosters you can usually expect to find special extended bordered versions of the planeswalkers during the set but speaking of special cards the card that's in the forefront is way more interesting to me and you can see it's actually used for the packaging box as well but it has a very a very bright and colorful and somewhat um like comic or cartoonish vibe to it Right? It doesn't have the normal style of magic artwork, and it stands right out to me. I don't know who this character is supposed to be, but I get the vibe that this is probably another vampire, because the, this individual does have one of these interesting looking headdresses going on with, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be nature -y leaves or jags of power. I don't know. But you've got this colorful figure set against this blue background, with these yellow candles floating around it or set in the tree. And it's just got a very, very striking vibe. It seems to me like these, this will most likely be the showcase style for the set. And I'm curious to see it in execution because showcase styles can vary mightily in execution. You know what I mean? So if you take, for example, Kaldheim's showcase cards, they look fantastic. If you take Zendikar's showcase frames, they don't really do anything for me. So it's a very hit or miss sort of thing, but I could see myself getting into this particular style of showcase um, like design. Now I do want to say, as I mentioned earlier in the video, we are far enough out from when this happens that when we're what we're looking at may not be what we see on the shelf, right? Now, the things that we're seeing in it, like Ren and Six, Teferi and stuff like that, 
you can reasonably assume that they will be there in the set. That is a very logical thing to assume. Although I guess there is a small chance that might not be the case, but Wizards designs their sets pretty far in advance and works on the packaging and everything. There was a, actually when we were dealing with the Ixalan block, before Ixalan came out, they were doing Ixalan in a like Atlantis style. And so they actually called the, um, what was it, Atslan or Aslan? They had some variation name of Atlantis that wasn't Atlantis so they could trademark it. And they had mock-ups of Ixalan boosters, but they had the Atslan name on it. That's how like crazy early that leak was. But that name never actually ended up getting used. The set ended up becoming Ixalan, right? We know it's the same set because it had the same cards that showed up in the artwork on the packs. But what I'm trying to say is when these boosters hit the shelves, the packaging that we see may be wildly different from this because this is just a digital production mock-up. So we don't know where along the chain this leak came from, right? We don't know if this is already a discarded version of the booster pack concept. So don't automatically expect to see the booster packs looking this way, but it's totally reasonable to believe that Ren and Six and Teferi are both slated to make an appearance on Innistrad. And that's gonna make for an interesting scenario. Perhaps they'll be at odds because Ren and Six is red green and Teferi is white blue. So there's a lot of adversarial nature, right? Each color has one of its enemy colors in the other and it covers four of the five colors of the set. So that's, that's interesting to me. But either way, I saw that, got super excited and wanted to talk to you guys about it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All the most awesome people in the world are scrolling by right now on the screen because they're my patrons. I'll leave a link to the last lore video that I made. Thanks for coming by, my friends. See you next time.